Yes, Chef. With Ryan. It's the segment on the show, one of my favourites, where we do something a little bit special. We bring in a special camera inside the studio to focus in on the delights that Chef Ryan has brought in for us, usually a Korean ingredient or a recipe. Today it is a beautiful side dish. Ryan, good morning. Did you have a good Chuseok holiday? Yes. Some ups and downs. Ups Uh, and downs. Can't lie, but but yeah. No, it was was nice. I had some time on the farm. I had some... uh, some time uh, making hot sauce. Oh, some really good hot oh, sauce. Oh, I saw your uh, Instagram post about Did that. You? Massive jars, Man, right? We, made, we got a ferment going with beets wow. and, and spicy ch- So I've not ever tried one like that before. It's kind of cool. With roots in it. Beet roots from the farm, uh-huh. uh, you know, blended, and then you get the right amount of salt in the water. Okay. You know, it's about a 2 or 3% solution, maybe closer to 4 sometimes. Yeah. Just like making kimchi. Same okay. kind of thing. And then it's yeah. going to be light kimchi. Well, it ferments. Um, I don't like for it to go too, too far. Yeah. Um, but but the ferment is what gives it so much depth and amazing flavor. Wow. Um, all across different, you know, different cultures, different cuisines, um, they use the fermentation process to preserve foods or to to increase the the amount of um, you know good probiotic bacteria. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole power of the kimchi, right? The super food. and yeah. and other countries too. <laughs> I know in, in Vietnam and and Laos, they've got all kinds of different. Uh, so you made the beetroot spicy. Yeah, yeah, by, by but adding a little what? sweetness. Uh, crazy chilies from the farm. You I know, saw like all the chilies, tongas and habanero That's and amazing. scotch bonnet and a spicy beetroot. I've never, I don't, I'm not into beetroots. You know, I'm a bit fussy. Yeah, and just the, a bit. The, the purple color as well puts me off. But if there's a bit of spice to them, I think I might prefer them. Well, I will bring you a special taste oh, once it's you. ready. I yeah. cannot wait to try. Yeah, it looks good. Oh, it looked oh like now you you're a, nervous. A little bit. <laughs> it looked like you had a really busy time over Chuseok as mm. well. Uh, but it is time now for everyone to get back to work. You know, it's going to be Holiday Blues hey. City, yeah, in the office. Everyone with glum faces, maybe. Uh, but today's dish has brightened up my day, Ryan. What are we going to be talking about? Um, well, there's a, a kind of famous, um, usually it's like a side dish, though, right? Yeah. Changjorim? Yeah, Changjorim, yeah. the side yeah. dish. That's my favorite panchan in the world, perhaps. Really? Because of the childhood memories that I have oh. from it. Um, I it s- is easy to like because of the saltiness, I think, of it. Yeah. yeah. So it's soy sauce braised beef that is usually served cold, right? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, the childhood memories I have from it, and I think other Korean children might have that memory, is when the mum just gives you that in a bowl with the warm rice. Sometimes mm-hmm. they'll put in a bit of butter in there as mm-hmm. well mm-hmm. and it's just a delicious meal by itself it is very sweet and salty like very stimulating a lot of flavor a lot of flavor but you know like a lot of han or korean korean cuisine you know you've got to balance things with your rice yeah you know? so that's that's what it's about yeah that um, makes it brings out the best in the rice as well mm. because it's balancing it like we talked about that time with the raw crabs you know with the kejang. oh don't get me started the no, rice also is the star of the show for that because it mm. balances the saltiness you have to yeah you can't just eat um that it's amazing i love it yeah but if you just eat kanjang kejang alone <laughs> it's just too much salt you, you need you, to just you, drink gallons of water yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. so why don't we show our listeners because they're dying to see what this looks like you've brought in a proper stone pot. well i did this because uh, it's your one year anniversary yes uh, happy birthday this. and that, that's Daily really K. that's really cool man thank congratulations you. Thank, i will shake so. your head on behalf of the show very yeah. cool man yeah. yeah i am hashtag daily k personified until they sack me and then the next person <laughs> will take on that mantle okay <laughs> all right all right um well i you know i could have just done some little thing of rice you know like we've done sometimes but sure but well, let's do this check this out this is that great big stone thing i love it that when i you think bring will this pot. will really like you yes. know we were talking um this is uh some nice organic rice you know wow organic um, rice there's some there's some black grain in there to give it that purple color now. Oh. There's also some Korean pine nuts in there that are really there's pine that are, nuts that are really expensive because yeah. if you've ever tried to extract pine nuts from a pine cone, you can realize why they're so expensive. I want to try that one time. Yeah. You'll only want to do it once. Really? Yeah. Okie uh-huh. dokie. And then there's the star uh-huh. of the show on top, right? That's the changjorim. Right. This this beef right here, the stringy beef, uh-huh. um, which is usually done from like round, like a cheaper cut of meat. 
So yeah. if you want to try this, it, it's not going to cost you much to try it. So. No. So like you said, it is very stringy. That's the way you kind of pull it off mm-hmm. one another. Um, and you've put it in with some egg as well. Is, yeah, it, I think this is a more modern um, style of mm-hmm. serving it. Where, of course, you know, there's not a whole lot of use of butter in Korea. No. But, uh, but this has become popular. It's with butter, melted butter over the rice, mm-hmm. the egg, and the jangjuri. Yeah, and mm-hmm. what you'll often get with the jangjurim itself are these other little eggs, which are the quail eggs, right? I the, love them. The mechriyas. Yeah. And you kids hate them. Kids love them as well. Yeah. My kids devour them. Well, these are are hard-boiled and then cooked or brined in the same brining liquid as you've got the jangjurim in. Uh-huh. So they're taking on those same flavors, sweet and salty. So that's so. why they turn this kind of brown color, right? Right. Um, mm-hmm. And quail eggs, are they big in the U.S. as well? Can no, you... no, no, no. No, I mean, you can find them in the U.K., but I don't know who eats them. What What is the difference? Are they just You know, small... fine dining back in the U.S., you'll see them used quite often because it, it really looks cool on a plate as yeah, like a topper does, to a slider <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> it is pretty um, cool. Uh, like you said, I'm not a big fan. And by the egg is the butter as well in this pot, right? That's this yellow. That is some really good um, grass-fed uh, uh, butter. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard to get good butter, although it's getting easier in Korea. It used mm. to be almost impossible. You just get the what they used to call margarine or the margarine. Oh, no, don't get me started on that one. Yeah, <laughs> I hate that stuff. Um, but yeah, this is real. This isn't actually, I use a lot of this butter from New Zealand, but... Uh, oh. But it's good stuff. Fantastic. Okay. So while people are looking at this, admiring how pretty it looks, obviously you don't usually cook in a stone pot these days in Korea. It's the electric or the pressure cooker, the rice cooker. This kind of acts as a pressure cooker. We talked about it last time I had it here, but mm. because this top is so heavy, I mean, check this out. Wow. I mean, that, that seals. So you'll see just a little bit of steam escaping, but but that's holding pressure in there. And that's, that's the old way of making the rice so awesome before we had these newfangled... Yeah, you know, pressure cookers that are. Tss, 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 you know. That did the job as well, didn't it? It does the job indeed. Um, mm. So, in terms of how to make this, can you take a step by step? So, so mm. what cuts can you use? Um, you'll often use like a London broil, like a round, you know, something pretty okay. lean, um, something pretty cheap. Um, yeah. I guess you could use brisket, but then you want to really remove all the fat. There's sure. a little bit more fat and stuff on the Yeah, there's basically next to no fat in chunk to it. Right? right. Plus, you soak it in water, in cold water, like overnight, okay? While it's raw. Yeah, uh-huh. while it's raw. Cut into like uh, chunks, maybe the size of a baseball, kind of. Mm-hmm. And then um, and then you boil the heck out of them for like an hour. <laughs> and that, Just in water? Yeah, just in water. Um, and then that kind of cleans them anymore gets any more oil off of them right okay and then you take those pieces out let them cool and you separate them you know you pull them into strips just by hand right mm-hmm. pulling them into strips yeah 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 i've done it uh with some some uh, cooks in in restaurants here in korea showing me how to do uh different dishes similar to this and and uh once you do that then you make your your brine you mm-hmm. know that you're going to put this in the fridge uh, maybe with some boiled eggs or, or quail eggs. Yeah. But the main the main important part is is water and soy. Okay. So I guess an eight to one ratio is pretty safe. Uh, now different soy sauces have different salinities, so just taste it and like if it tastes too salty, then add a little more water. You're saying eight portions of soy mm-hmm. to no, one. No, 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 the no, other no, way coconut. around, right? The other okay. way. Okay, yeah, good, yeah. good, good. <laughs> so eight <laughs> portions of water to one portion of soy. That's pretty then, safe, yeah. And then balance it out from there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you like salty, you know, add a little more. If you if it tastes too salty, take it back a little notch. Um, but then you want to sweeten it up as well. Mm-hmm. And a lot of recipes will say sugar um, or some kinds of syrup. I, I always recommend like honey or even, you know, get some fruit in there. Get some Asian pear or apple or something to sweeten it up a little bit there. Naturally. And just keep tasting, you know. And when it gets to a sweetness level... Um, that's uh, almost overbearing. You're just about there because <laughs> it is pretty sweet. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like you just need yeah. a little portion on a big spoon of rice mm-hmm. um, when you're eating it, and that is more than enough. And then you just leave the beef like that in there for. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm no? sorry. You gotta you gotta bring your brine up to a boil because you've got okay. like garlic and scallions in there, uh-huh. and uh, let's see what else might go in there. Um, sweetener, uh, the soy, the what? Yeah, yeah. Scallions. Oh, chilies. Maybe chilies, some if you want maybe, a bit spicy, a little bit spicy, but often they'll just use the non spicy green chilies here just to give uh-huh. it a little bit of a fresh pepper flavor. Yeah, and you um, can eat those as well when, when it's finished. And oh, they taste absolutely, good with it's the like beef. the jang yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so then you know, get that up so that you can get some of that garlic flavor in there, and then and then cool it back down, and then and then leave your beef in there for a while. 
uh, definitely overnight, but maybe At longer. Least. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you can leave that in the fridge for a long time, right? Just like so many foods in Korea, you know, you're, you're what do I feel like today? You go open up the, <laughs> the kimchi fridge and you're like, let's use this panchan and this panchan. And, That's the and great that. thing, isn't it? If you've got a lot yeah. of panchans prepared or you prepare them in big batches, mm. they can last you for weeks in the fridge, right? That's and right. this is no exception uh, because mm. it's in that saltiness, you know, which is naturally killing the bacteria. Right, right, right. It does preserve that meat for sure. Yeah. Okie dokie. So, so I'm, smart, really. I'm dying to eat this. So are we going to mix it up? Because the butter is kind of just sitting there. Yeah, you uh, want to do the honors? Yeah, you want to yeah, give it a okay. shot? I mean, right. so there's no set way to how you mix this, I suppose. Yeah, you can um, push some, down on the on the egg and break it up. Let's and, break it up. Yeah. Some people, you know, when you're doing the pibimbap. I went to Jonju on the weekend, mm -hmm. famous for its pibimbap, right? Yeah. And uh, they will swear by using chopsticks to mix the pibimbap. Some people, oh, right? Um, and Everybody says you can use spoon. a spoon. Uh, yeah, and I find the spoon much easier, but I think they say with the chopsticks, it's kind of because it's a smaller utensil, you get more mixing. I've going always got on. the chopsticks in the right hand, the spoon in the left hand, and I'm going and, and you going. just go yeah. for it. How do you, you, yeah. Just the chopsticks, yeah, to huh. me it's a bit weird. It's like almost whisking it or something. You do right? kind of need both. Yeah. Because then you get to pick up some pieces and move them around oh, in the spoon. Look at, look at that. That looks amazing. Oh, la, la. oh. Okay. All right. Now we're going to give it a try. I'll give you a portion in your dish. Well, thank you, sir. Here. Is this something that you tend to eat? You know, you're, you're a single guy, Ryan. So when I was single, I used to eat a lot of chung chidim because I'd have it as a side dish. And then I'd put it in with the butter and it would just be delicious. Um, no, no, not actually. Yeah, this is actually my first time. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. this this mixture. this style, this style. Of course, I've had jangju many times. I've made it many times, but um, but with the, with butter. the butter and the egg and the rice. Oh this my! Is, this is it. This Are is you the first. serious? Here we go. They sell this in lots of restaurants. Give it a try while I'm dishing up. Still, because they go. serve it in one of my favorite restaurants, which also f serves a lot of dakbokki mm. and uh, kimbap as well. Is it good? It's a lot of. It's a. It's a very kind of uh, dish geared to immature immature mm. taste palettes i would say mm. like kids love this as well wow are you are you on board it's not oh, i'm too... totally on board and yeah. i want i want more egg mm. Mm. okay so the butter really adds an that extra was just flavor, the right, right amount of butter yeah yeah you're right that was perfect um it's a big bowl of rice so a, a sizable slab of butter was fine um but the butter adds a little different taste to it than just a soy you can just have it with the chung jodim, right you, you look amazed you don't like those quail eggs i'm not a fan i'll just go for the normal egg you're not gonna i want you to try one that was the best bite all right i will go with the quail egg as well um let's try it. i'm not it's a fan so of boiled good. eggs in general like i'll eat the yolks but not so Is much it a general. textural thing mm, i think uh -huh. so so let's give this a try mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mmm, wow. Voila. That's the first oh. quail egg I've ever eaten in my life whole. <clears throat> I live for the moments when we can convince Peter that uh, oh. he likes something that he didn't think he liked. Seriously, this dish is amazing. And this really is why good. panchans and side dishes in Korea, like Ryan said, are so convenient. You just chuck them in the fridge, keep them for weeks, and whenever you feel like having that particular panchan, you take it out, have it with some rice. To be honest, you don't need like a main dish. You can just eat the side dishes with the rice if you're in a rush for lunch or something like that right oh, you look man. in heaven you gotta you gotta serve this at a restaurant somewhere seriously oh oh okay They're, okay quail eggs do have a lot of cholesterol you don't want to eat them like, oh, really? all the time because of the yolk i suppose it's all yolk did you feel it like yeah when, when you, you bite, punch through it's, it's very all yolk it's a very thin egg white isn't so it? rich but mm. so 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 good oh all right, we're going to take a song break. Uh, we're probably going to finish off this bowl of rice as well in the studio. Mm. And we'll be back with your messages and any ingredients for what's in your fridge. If you have something similar in your country, some kind of cold beef dish that has been marinated or fermented, do let us know as well. This is Pat Boram featuring Jiko with beautiful Yepajata. We're back for part two of Yes Chef. Ryan is in the studio and we're talking all about changjorim today, the soy sauced braised beef. But don't forget, one of the key things of this is it's a side dish, so it's served cold most of the time. And don't let that put you off because it goes really well together with the uh, hot rice. Like, I'm not a fan of cold beefs. Or cold Often meats. it's also with the porridge or the juke. 
Uh, that's the, yes. It's so often served, like a little bitty portion of it. That's right, a tiny yeah. side dish, like yeah. a mini side dish, because I think the porridge can be quite bland in terms of flavor. Exactly. It, it really needs something. gives yeah. it a kick, doesn't it? Are you right. supposed to mix it in? I guess With so. With the juke. I yeah. don't know, because if you mix it in, it's usually, like you said, the tiny portions. Right. So I think you lose the flavor. I usually eat it really fast and like, chug yo, chug em, don't you say <laughs> Give me some more. Yeah. Uh, yeah, with most side dishes, they'll be more than happy to do that in Korea, which is great. Mm. And the dish that we did as well, that is uh, Changjorim Butter Pup, um, which right. is mixed with butter all together with an egg usually and sometimes mm. the quail eggs. And that is a delicious little meal that you can get at some restaurants. And it's not expensive because the, the root ingredients are not that pricey for that. Yeah, yeah, it's not. It, it is kind of a premium thing on the menus there, you know, compared to like a kimbap or something like that. Yeah, but, they'll, they'll, uh, they'll jack it up, but it'll still be within yeah. like seven, eight dollars. Right, yeah, right, right, and you right. can have it for a lunch, a nice lunch. Uh, we got a message from Siska here in Indonesia saying, "Panchan for today! Yay! I love panchan, but not the red cabbage kimchi. Sorry, it's too sour and spicy for me. I like potato panja, panchans, the kamja something. Maybe you're talking about the kamja chon, the." Potato potato pancakes that's quite a common one and also the thin fish cakes i love that side dish oh you know the omuk side dish right just the thinly sliced like strips of fish cake that you oh have yeah, there, yeah, right? yeah 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 that's also another favorite of kids around isn't it well sweet and salty yeah, yeah i absolutely. mean uh, that's like hot dogs back home you know <laughs> it's like yeah just the right amount of sugar and salt in there and it's fat true. not not great for your health but uh still the yellow radish is another of siska's favorites again favorite <laughs> with kids and yeah. the bean sprout one okay a little more healthy and for sure the beef one that's in your hot pot ryan but not always uh, got this one too bad yeah it's not that common i'd say chung as a as a panchan in restaurants with the chuk like you said the porridge right it's often there at the porridge restaurants they've always got it but other places it's just you know hit or miss i think it's yeah. whenever they find a uh, beef round on special yeah you know? yeah and at, then, at the markets yeah. right yeah. <laughs> uh, omg i'm hungry to see the dish i love everything inside that hot uh, hot pot especially the kongbab as well well it's not the bean ones what else is in that rice did you say apart from the pine nuts what are the other Oh, purple. I I did put in. Let's see. Oh, I put a little bit of chop sal, the uh, chop the sal. glutinous rice. Uh -huh. uh, I just I just love that stuff. I love the way it's kind of a little bit chewy. Yeah. Uh, there's some organic short grain Korean rice, and then there's the organic um, uh, black rice, which actually turns purple. Yeah. You just you don't need very much. It's probably a ratio of like one to five. And that um, stays quite like crunchy as you're eating. It does. It's it's, like it's a it. it's a longer grain. It it's almost like queedy or like kind of like an oats thing or something. Yeah. And it has a little pop to it. So I, I love that mix. Mm. And you're right to praise that, Siska. It was so so good. We ate more in the break as well, and we'll probably finish it all off. Even our camera lady in the studio had some. Um. So that's what we've been talking about today. Changjurim soy sauce braised beef with Chef Ryan. And if you want to check us out on YouTube. YouTube, you can see this video posted up every single week. Just type in Arirang Radio on YouTube and uh, Yes Chef and you'll be able to see all our past segments there. And uh, yeah, if you're missing your mum's cooking for Koreans, this can be a uh, kind of memorable dish from your youth. Absolutely delicious. And if you're watching this video again on YouTube right now, don't forget you can tune in every Tuesday live in the studio around 10 a.m. Korean time on hashtag DailyK, the show that keeps you up to date with the latest news from Korea. Okay, it's time for What's in Your Fridge, and we've got a good selection here, Ryan. Where are you going to start? you got your pen out. You're getting serious today. Man, I'm trying to get this going here. <laughs> i got a lot here to go through. I hope we get through more. Okay. Um, put, put. We've got uh, an interesting fridge here. There's bread, eggs, carrot, cheese, cheddar cheese, tofu, vanilla ice cream, sweetened condensed milk, cola, and dates. Ooh. And she's asked that we try to do something with the dates. And you reminded me of something that I used to make with my father and my sister uh, around Christmas time a few times. And okay. it's like a date nut roll. Have a you ever had one of those? Date nut roll. I'm not a fan of dates. They're oh. like giant raisins, aren't they? 
like huge. They're so good. Freaky raisins. They're so good. They have the pits inside, which can be a little annoying. But, yeah, I don't like that as well. But they're so good. Take a walnut. Uh-huh. Take a really nice Korean walnut uh. and take a date yep. and eat them together. Yeah. And you will never turn back. I'm on board with you there because whenever I eat walnuts, eating them by themselves, they're too dry and they've got that kind of flavor. So there's a, I eat them with raisins. There's like a simple Persian breakfast where uh-huh. they'll take um, a sunny side up egg, get some nuts and some dates in there. And yep. when that egg yolk breaks Ooh. and you got the walnuts and the dates, oh, ah. That sounds good. Oh, it's so sounds good. pretty healthy so, as well. So good, yeah. Apart from the egg yolk, I suppose. So I, I really would like to tell you about this this date nut roll thing here. Um, what it's normally done with is is you take something like a um, a kind of sweet cracker, like a digestive or a, or a gram or something like that, uh-huh. and crush them all up. And uh, and you'll need the dates. You could also incorporate the carrots in there if you just kind of maybe cut them up, maybe put them through a grater. You could use that there. You can definitely use the sweetened condensed milk. Um, but check out some date nut roll recipes. If you've got some nuts around like walnuts or pecans, even almonds, um, that gives you a little crunch. Basically, what you're making is kind of like a dessert snack roll that you end up slicing into little pieces. And so there's nothing like... On the outside of this roll, it's just that kind of mixture rolled into like right. a cylinder. Exactly, oh, exactly. Okay. And it's it's really sweet. It's uh, honestly like I, I wasn't really that much into sweets when I was a kid, but I remember making this with my father and my sister a couple of Christmases in a row for our like family Christmas parties or nice. and stuff. And, and it really is kind of cool. And it's an interesting way to use the dates that you maybe haven't heard of. Could so, you put the cheese in there? Is that a bit weird? Possibly some cheese, but I don't know about the cheddar cheese. Okay, yeah. I don't think that would go very well. But that's maybe, something fun maybe. To, to maybe make with the kids as well, right? Just yeah. a, a Oh, nice definitely. Easy definitely, because it's all with your hands, you know, and you get parchment paper and try to roll it up almost like a like a kimbap or something. Oh, that's pretty cool, Poopit. I hope yeah. you give that a try. Let us know how it turns out. Maybe even the villain ice cream on the side as well. Okie dokie. Mm. Who's next? Mm. Rosalind. All right. We've got bacon, mushroom, zucchini, asparagus, pumpkin pie, raspberries, avocado, and thick-cut center pork chops. Oh, Oh, Roz, by the way, just said quail eggs in Florida are so expensive, Mm. and she's only fortunate enough to have worked with a chef who used it for his specials from time to time, and also she raised some quails before and enjoyed the cute eggs. Are they expensive Mm. in the States? Because they're, I guess... I I'm, I don't remember. I'm not sure. I know. You know what? It's funny. Here you can find the eggs everywhere. Yeah. But it's kind of hard to find the quail. That's true. Yeah. No one eats quail, where, right? Where are all these quail that are laying all these eggs? And why can't I get them in my market? Maybe uh, they keep them alive to just lay eggs and I, don't eat them. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I don't understand. But in the States, it's it's the opposite. You know, yeah. you can find quail, yeah. but you can't find the eggs as easily. So maybe, maybe that's what's happening. Maybe that is. Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? They're getting shipped around. Um, um, Roslyn, your fridge, uh, the center cut pork chops. Oh my goodness. Uh, I miss that so much. I hope they're like bone on. They're hard to find here. I've met a few butchers that have helped me, you know, get a special cut, do the like tomahawk with that long rib bone on there. It adds oh. so much flavor. Oh, I love it. I love it. Um, so I got to use the pork chops somehow. Um, have you ever tried a stuffed pork chop? Uh, it's, it's kind of fun. You know, it's, it's different. You can, you take the fat side of the pork chop of course away from the bone uh-huh. and you basically cut a pocket in there okay and then you par cook some vegetables like you could do the mushrooms the bacon the zucchini um no use the use the avocado on top maybe but basically you just stuff that inside the pork chop it's got to be quite a thick pork chop then right it might have to be but you can okay. just cut a like take a, a a paring knife or something and cut a small pocket in okay. there it's kind of fun you know you can you can put anything in there that you want i've done them with with cheese inside you do have to watch your cook time because if those ingredients inside are yeah. cold when they go in yeah. then it's going to keep the center of that pork chop from cooking okay. so if you can put them in warmer it'll it'll help speed that up as in cook them first and then put right. them in okay. right 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 um, but that's kind of a fun way to do it. Of course, you don't have to do that. You could make an amazing sauce um, and just just drizzle it over the top. I love starting sauces with bacon because you get those bacon drippings out, oh. and then you can emulsify in you know other ingredients like like vinegar or lemon juice or or whatever. You could even go towards the raspberries. You know, bacon raspberry. Um, and then some kind of something sour in there, and maybe a little bit more sweet, and you could have a really nice 
sweet sour sauce to accompany the fattiness of the pork chop inside the pork chop stuff. oh i was thinking on top oh, okay but, but yeah okay yeah. that sounds like a fun thing to do though stuffing them i'd yeah. love to there's give a that few a ideas sorry that's a little all over the map but no uh, no no good ross let us know hopefully. how that goes uh cisco what does cisco have today <laughs> all right uh banana potato broccoli meatball fish ball carrot tofu uh, hey Kang, it's like a thick fish, beef, and prawn mix cake. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. Ice cream again, pudding. Uh, all right. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> you get me every time, Cisco. I'm just, I'm just stumped by these. I, I want to know what these fish balls taste like and what these meatballs taste like to know what I can do with this. Hey Kang, beef and and prawn mixed together in a cake what wow. fish beef and prawn wow. i guess in some kind of dim sums you get a mix of different meats but that sounds interesting doesn't it i guess um what i would want to do goodness i just don't know what these flavors really are um if you wanted to try to i mean i guess the idea of this is to build something out of out of as many of these ingredients as possible yes. so so um, I, I think you could do. I'm imagining these these fish balls, these fish cakes, as having maybe some breadcrumbs in them or something that lightens them up. Often I've seen this in Southeast Asia where uh -huh. where they'll be lighter. You know, that's not like a dense meatball. The ones meatball. that you get here, right? Okay. It's more of a almost like a, like a matzo ball or something okay. like that, right? And uh, and so maybe you could, you know, put them in the oven and dry them out a little bit and then break them up. You know, break them up into little pieces mm -hmm. and then reincorporate them into something else like um, almost like a casserole or like a God, what would you do with that? Um, but, yeah, I guess the inspiration I want to give you today, Siska, is if you if you take these fish balls and maybe there's a certain way you usually eat them, like put them in a soup. Well, try something different. Take them, dry them out a little bit, crush them up, get them into pieces. Mm. And then you could use that as the outside of a, of a fry batter. You could use that, um, you know, as the topping on on a quiche or a casserole or something like that. Oh. You could uh, crisp it up really well in a pan or in the oven and then sprinkle it over the tofu and oh. have that textural contrast. That would be quite cool. So, do something completely that you wouldn't think of doing yeah, with a fish yeah. cake. Yeah, do something different, Siska. I say put it on the ice cream. Fish cakes <laughs> and ice cream. How much weirder Yeah, I bet get. Peter would eat that. <laughs> not a chance. Of course not. Uh, and then we have one, I think, uh, a message from Audrey in France here, right? Yeah, Audrey. Um, Audrey d didn't give us any fridge input, but she just wants some inspiration for cooking okay so then i'd have to go seasonal and and i it, you know is it truffle season right now i think it would be or is it's definitely a, like mushroom it's mushroom time around autumn yeah, yeah i mean right. i've never been fortunate enough to live in an area where you know there's there's truffles that i can just go find yeah um but i imagine it would be the fall okay. and and mushrooms definitely would be you know this time a little more rain around mm -hmm. And actually, when I went, was lucky enough to be in in, uh, in in France many years ago, we went, we met some folks, and they wanted to go looking for mushrooms in the forest. So oh, nice. we we spent my brother and I and and these friends that we met, yeah, we spent a few hours. Uh, didn't find a whole lot of edible ones. Uh, Is it easy to tell? Uh, we had people who knew. I don't okay. think I would not recommend that anybody go and try to do this on their own. But sure. you need somebody to help you out. Uh, yeah. First thing to do, a friend told me that that forages a lot, is to learn the like nine or ten varieties that are really dangerous okay. and know those well. All right, and then you can uh, you can maybe start to oh, forage okay. a little bit. That's cool. But yeah, for inspiration, always when I'm looking for inspiration, I want to go to the market. I want to walk around the market and see what looks the best What's that day. freshest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But if you, you know, if you've got a forest nearby that might have some <laughs> some seasonal mushrooms, that's what I would do. After a long haul flight, she's going back from Japan to France. I'm sure she'd love that. Go oh, to the gosh. forest. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> no, but definitely seasonal, right? Yeah, okay. seasonal. So for say sure. it's mushrooms. Yeah. What could you do? Anything kind of French inspired that could be maybe mixed in with Korean? I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, what do we do with mushrooms here so often? They go into a lot of soups. They go straight onto the griddle. Yeah. Or grill. Um. Let's see. What else do you see? John. 
Um, mushrooms in a chun. I think what would normally done be done in France is just a a, um, a mushroom omelet de champion. Oh, know, okay, like a mushroom omelet. Yeah, um, that would be nice if you've been on a long haul flight. You don't want to do too much cooking. An oh, omelet, no. a mushroom yeah. omelet. I love mushrooms in an omelet. Yeah, they're, I they're can't stop thinking about eggs from these quail eggs in here. So good. Oh, Maybe man. make it with quail eggs. I wonder. There you go. That would be an expensive omelet. Yeah. You'd need about twenty quail eggs, I suppose. W- with with mushrooms in general, though, um, you know, I, I really like to put them into a dry pan uh-huh. often and and just low heat and let that water just start to come out you don't really have to put butter on them yet or okay. oil or anything let that let that dry heat just kind of get the moisture to start to come to the surface yeah give it a taste yeah add a little bit of salt taste it again mm-hmm. and then if you want to add fat or something then go mm-hmm. for it but that's how you're really going to taste the mushrooms especially keeping it on a low heat because if it's quite high i've tried it a couple of times they dry out quite quickly if it's mm. on a higher heat sure. right yeah, yeah and then yeah. they get a completely different texture right there's a but lot of water heat. in there if you can get it to like warm up and kind of steam itself a little bit but yeah. not totally evaporate oh. you'll get to really taste it we've got some amazing mushrooms coming in season here now oh which that, ones um what, what is the what is like the hedgehog mushroom what is it uh, Nungi, Nungi Posa. Oh, I don't you know, know that one. Maybe we should do There's that next week. There's some crazy ones. Okie yeah, dokie. Yeah, yeah. I'd like yeah. some exotic mushrooms. Because I like the ones that you don't see in the UK here. You know the really long, stringy ones that you get in Twin Yeah, stuff. they're so cheap and fun. Yeah. They, they do get stuck in your teeth. They do, but I still love that texture as well pop, in, pop, in a pop. soup. Yeah, or mm. if they're grilled as well. That's quite nice indeed. Maybe mm. we could do a mushroom special soon. I'd love to. Audrey, I hope that has inspired you when you get off the plane from France to, uh, in France, I say uh, to do a little mushroom omelet tell us what it's like as well uh, Ryan you are going to be leaving us and munching on the rest of that Changjurin butter rice uh, have a great back week back to the restaurant and we will see you next Tuesday it's time for another song this one is day six when you love someone Kurotara Goyo